Hello and thank you for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. United States Secretary of State Pompeo is arriving in Israel for senior level talks on Friday regarding the deteriorating situation in Syria as the Turkish offensive against the U.S. allied Kurdish forces continues. And Pompeo is set to assure Netanyahu that the United States withdrawal from Syria does not put Israel at risk. This discussion in Jerusalem follows another meet between Pompeo, Vice President Pence, and Turkish officials in Ankara, though, where the American delegation is asking President Erdogan to stop his assault. President Trump even sent an odd letter to the Turkish leader on October 9th that reads in part, don't be a tough guy and don't be a fool. But all this is viewed as toothless and rhetorical, as Trump also continues to argue for the pullout, even against the U.S. House, which just overwhelmingly voted to condemn the move. Because as predicted by many U.S. officials, following the U.S.'s withdrawal, Erdogan launched his attack, killing hundreds on both sides and displacing hundreds of thousands. And simultaneously, Washington has lost face by seemingly abandoning its allies like the Kurds, Israel, and even the Gulf states, who view this latest, quote, betrayal as a major red flag. Also, hundreds of ISIS fighters are escaping captivity, while Syrian forces struggle to reinforce the border. Turkish President Erdogan, however, is not yet yielding. He views the Kurds as terrorists, while also looking to establish a supposed safe zone for housing Syrian refugees. In related news, many countries are joining in in condemning Turkey's incursion into Syria, with the EU for one imposing an arms embargo on Ankara for as long as the attacks continue. But that's not all, because it seems that the attempted genocide of the ethnic Kurdish people has now united both Jewish and Arab Israelis in protest too, under the banner of the NGO standing together. According to the group's statement, they've amassed their members for a demonstration outside the Turkish embassy on Thursday in support of, quote, the struggle for independence and peace in Syria and our opposition to the foul maneuvers of Erdogan and Trump, end quote. The NGO also explains that we cannot stand idly by as the brave men and women fighting in Kurdistan who have scored victories against ISIS barbarity are now forced to confront a big and strong army which is a party to NATO and receives U.S. support. And finally, this is far from the only Israeli-based protest against the Kurdish attacks. On Tuesday, a pro-Kurdish protest organized by ex-IDF officers also took place outside the American and Turkish embassies alongside another demonstration with over 300 Israeli civilians. Now moving on, a Palestinian driver from East Jerusalem is now seriously injured after attempting a car ramming attack against Israeli troops near Ramallah Thursday morning. Border police say that soldiers ended the attack though by shooting and injuring the driver and no Israeli injuries are reported. But it all began Wednesday evening as Israeli forces raided the West Bank's Al-Amari refugee camp near Ramallah to arrest two wanted terror suspects. And as the soldiers were leaving the camp, a car reportedly sped up and collided with the army transport, quote, intent on running over the combat fighters. Following the collision, though, the IDF troops proceeded to shoot and subdue the suspect, especially after seeing that the suspect grabbed a knife in order to continue his attack. Again, though, even despite the riot that then broke out between Palestinians at the scene and border forces, no further injuries were reported. Meanwhile, as Israel fights to free an Israeli from captivity in Russia, Jordan is petitioning Jerusalem for the same thing. And she's lost 22 pounds and has not eaten for 21 days. 32-year-old Hiba al-Labadi, a Jordanian citizen with Palestinian roots, has been in Israeli detention since August 20th, when she was arrested at the Allenby Bridge crossing, which connects Jordan and the West Bank. Israeli internal security, however, say they suspect she's been involving herself in serious security violations. But al Abadi had been passing through with her family members in order to attend a wedding, and authorities have held her without pressing any formal charges since that day. While the Jordanian government says the hunger strike is making her release more urgent, and families say that al Abadi has no ties to politics and is not an activist. But reports have surfaced suggesting that she has met with people associated with the Hezbollah terror group while she was visiting Lebanon, so her detention remains indefinite. That's all for now, so follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and of course on Instagram. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.